So we got nothing OS 3.0 based on Android 15 even before the Android 15 official update has hit Pixel devices. Now this is the update from nothing that we've all been waiting for for the longest time. Of course, it's an open beta, so I would suggest against installing it on your nothing device right now. But if you want to know what's new in the design, what are the new features that have been added, Let's take a look at that in this video. So let's explore Nothing OS 3.0 versus Nothing OS 2.6. Hi, I'm Ershad. You're watching Track Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. Now, if you're wondering, we are running the open beta on the Nothing Phone 2A, but the OS 3.0 update will be available on the Phone 2, the Phone 1, the Phone 2A Plus, and even the CMF Phone 1. And the first change that you will notice is the fact that the N dot font hasn't been overused now. So now you get a very refined design, whether it's in the quick settings, whether it's in the app drawer or in the settings page, it's all been changed to make it look minimalistic and appealing. In fact, if you look at it, the N dot font that used to be at the title of any settings page has now been changed. For for example, if you look at the glyph interface on the battery settings page, the dot matrix font has been replaced by a serif font now and all the settings below it is in a sans serif font. Plus within the settings app itself, you've got clear demarcation with bars around each of the setting that you can see, which is very, very well done. In fact, even in the clock in the status bar, the N dot font has been replaced. But nothing still believes a lot in the dot matrix design and that has been exported to animations now. For example, take a look at this fingerprint animation on Nothing OS 2.6 compared to Nothing OS 3.0. Yeah, the dot matrix animation looks damn nice. In fact, that same dot matrix design will be used for the charging animation, but that's not currently available in this build. One area where Nothing has made a huge upgrade is in lock screen design. Firstly, if you want to customize the lock screen, you can do it directly from the lock screen itself. In fact, Nothing has added different clock styles and you can swipe through them. There's one clock style that's specifically designed after the London underground clock, which looks damn cool by the way. But more importantly, within the lock screen page itself, nothing gives you the customization option. So if you don't want the clock, you can have an expanded widget area instead. And I still love the fact that you can add quick settings as your widgets, which means that you can have the option to switch on or switch off your mobile data or Wi-Fi directly from the lock screen and the home screen too. By the way, talking about widgets, take a look at this widgets page now within the home screen. It's been redesigned to look so much more cooler. There's a lot of coherence in the design. You get these individual boxes for each one of them and you can just tap it and change the widget from there itself. Plus, now you don't need to forcefully add the widget by dragging and dropping it to the home screen. You just have an add widget button now. There's also a new widget coming called countdown widget, which will let you count down to say your birthday, or even this open beta. But yeah, I mean, that widget is not available in the current build. Another interesting feature that's coming in future builds is the ability to share widgets, which means that you can actually share the widgets with somebody else who uses a Nothing phone as well. Now, home screen customization itself hasn't changed much. It is still the very same as Nothing OS 2.6. You can change wallpapers. You have AI wallpapers. You can change the icon pack. You also can theme according to the color of the wallpaper. All of that is currently available. Now, those are the changes to the lock screen, the home screen, the font, and the whole design of the UI. But the quick settings has been upgraded so much that I absolutely love it now. Now, when you swipe down the quick settings and notification shade for the first time, you will see that the quick settings panel is much more compact now, leaving more space for the notifications to come in. And the second swipe reveals the entire quick settings page and the design looks so good. Now, in Nothing OS 2.6, you had two massive tiles at the top. Now, that can be changed to whatever you want now. In fact, if you want it to be smaller, you can make it smaller as well because the widget sizes can be changed in three different sizes. There's a small circuit one, then there's a wider pill format, and then there's like a bigger square. And you can change the size of the tiles across the quick settings uh, panel, and it looks damn nice. And all of this happens within a very well designed grid, too. By the way, the reset button's position has been changed, and the design has also been changed slightly, but I think it's all very well done. There are two more very important changes made to the quick settings page after user feedback. The fact that the quick settings page is also now available in a light mode. So until Nothing OS 2.6, even if you switched the entire system's dark mode to light mode, the quick settings page would still be in dark mode. It was forced to be in dark mode, but that's not the case anymore. And that's not it. The brightness slider now has the automatic brightness button, which means that you can switch on or switch off the automatic brightness directly from there itself, which is really godsend. Now let's take a look at the app drawer changes and there are some really nifty upgrades there too. My favorite one is the fact that you can pin your favorite most used app to the top row. Of course, you still have app suggestions, but to have the control in your hand is something that I really appreciate. That's not it. There's a smart app drawer feature now, which automatically categorizes all of your apps into folders based on your usage. This is very similar to how the app drawer looks within iOS. There are a couple of changes that I noticed with the camera app as well. Firstly, the processing time has improved for HDR and portrait pictures. So 
when you now take a photo with a phone running nothing OS 2.6 compared to nothing OS 3.0, you will see that it opens within the photos app and it processes it much faster. Now, which brings me to the new gallery app that nothing is going to launch really soon. It's not available in the current beta build, which I really wanted to try. I'm really looking forward to it. Now with this new gallery app, nothing has its very own design of what it thinks a gallery app should be. And of course, it's also added a bunch of AI features. For example, you'll get AI upscaling, AI image categorization, and a whole lot more. But of course, this is coming later. Now, compared to the Funtouch OS 15 update that we saw recently, if you haven't watched the video yet, go check it out. The Nothing OS 3.0 update is not just a minor upgrade. There are tons of improvements that I really, really appreciate. And these changes extend across the design of the operating system itself. And there are some really cool functional additions as well. So what do you think? Will Nothing OS 3.0 be the best software update in 2025, or will it be any other Android phone, One UI 7 maybe, I don't know. While you think about that, I'll work on the next video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.